And I've spent the last 20 years in hallways with comedians. So I feel like it's kind of, it's more of an emotional injury. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I've, yeah. It's consistent. <laughs> I've fallen 20 feet mentally before. Yeah. Um, you guys are all pretty terrifying for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I want to talk to you about this. Please don't. Well, it's just... <laughs> Well, it's just so, I just got here. I don't want to have any comments about anybody. Well, I feel like it's all so like, what's the, it's not grass is greener, but like we're in awe of you guys. Like you're scared of us. Like, yeah. you know, it's just funny. I'm like, scared of you more than all of them. Why is that? I, I don't feel know. You know what the weirdest thing is? is Every like, time I, I see you, 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 ignore me. I was so attracted to you that it was weird. <laughs> and I would say stuff oh, and my God. wife would be like, you need to calm down with that. And I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Every time she has a photo, you go, God, she's hot. I'm like, man, I, I didn't, it just happened. I don't, I'm not like DMing her or anything. I just look at this. Wow, that's crazy. And she's like, you got to calm down with that. And then you Are we rolling? Because I have thoughts. Welcome. Here we go. And I'm not Tony Hall. Hi, when are you coming, Sarah? Shalom. Just found out I'm half Jewish. Now I'm on. No, nah. that's Shalom shit. Yeah, my mom. Are you died. lying? No. Half. Half. So well, that means one of your parents was lying about his. So my dad's. He uh, didn't know. My dad's mom and my mom's dad both Jewish and had changed their name. Oh. In Texas and Virginia. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, I've everyone kind of told me I was Jew. Everyone's like, you're Jew for sure Jewish. But I didn't have any proof until they died. Yeah. <laughs> on, 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 on what? <laughs> I was so curious. I just killed them. Well, you know how like family secrets tend to come out? Have you had parents sure. die? And you're like, yeah. oh, that's not, you know, yeah. you find out. You know, I got a whopper when my, my dad mom was died. a different age. That's what we found out. Your mom had lied about her age? No. Well, her mom told her she was born in a certain year and she wasn't and came to find out that it might have been because her mom, something subversive happened. Can I ask you a question though? Yeah. Was it, did she think she was younger than she was or older than she was? She was told that she was younger, two years. Fascinating, because I did, I was involved in a, in a movie idea a while back that was about a woman who got her age wrong for whatever reason, maybe mm -hmm. something like this, and she found out when she turned 40 that she was actually turning 36 or something. And like, what do you do with that information if you find out you're actually four years younger than you are? And she like got out of the relationship she was in, you find out you might have fertility, you never, like yeah, that's it was, fascinating. it was more that my mom found out that, that so who, the guy that raised her was not her father. That's what, that's where it all came from. <sighs> That'll yeah, do it. That's the yeah. worst part. I would have been sure. relieved. <laughs> I would have been like, thank God that's not my dad. I would just look <laughs> in the mirror and be like, is it a good thing that I'm older? Or like, is my face match the new age? Right. Like, what do you do with that information? Yeah. Oh, I don't. I, there's many. There's not much to cling on to when mm -hmm. you're getting old. You know, like you. You got. Well, I, I was also, just talking about it before you got here. Extremely late. Um, <laughs> <laughs> good one. Are we the, roasting her? <laughs> I, yeah. By the way, I was Whatever. ten minutes late. I'm ten minutes late. I am ashamed. She can't get me in here. You. But your text, me. your text read like the Californian. <laughs> I shouldn't have taken Los Angeles to Topanga. <laughs> like I don't. I just sent you fifty-eight numbers. It's just hieroglyphic. <laughs> sorry, I'm late. Just four, five, one, oh, one, seventy-two. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's embarrassing. But I, I, I've been looking forward to this. Um, I do feel like Tony and I are kind of have developed a friendship. I'm obsessed with I your wife. I would like wife. to think so. Thank you. Your wife and I have a lot in common. Uh, we both have the same the migraine bonding, migraine bonding yep. trauma bonding. Right. Um, and I keep telling her the only thing you haven't tried for your migraines is not talking to your husband as much as you do. I don't, maybe it's maybe it's Tony. Oh, trust me, she tries that. She tries that. I'm like, we need to isolate the variables. I don't let it happen, but she tries. Um, but uh, Jason, I feel like we should be better friends, but you're always very awkward. I yeah. think when we see each other. Yeah. Well, he just well, you told gotta, you why. So what? Well, he I'll tell people. I'll be like, "Oh, this is my friend," Jay, and I'll and I'll go say hi to you, and you'll just like walk away. Yeah. And I'm like, "I thought we were friends." Care to comment? There's a lot of we've been. I've been in a lot of challenging circumstances of late, and then also the first time I met you, I was doing stand up. And thank you, but that's 1,300 people, and I was nowhere near ready for that. 
and it's still the most nerve wracking thing that's ever happened to me in my life. <laughs> Which is ridiculous. Which it helped me because then I did comedy in normal rooms after it and I was like, so what? Have you ever done what? I, I just got thrown into the fucking pit and now I'm doing stand up in front of 50 people. I'm like, I don't care. You it don't helped get me to, a lot. You don't get to be a professional skateboarder and then decide to become a stand up and then all of a sudden decide you're not brave. I'm That's just, not when you get to decide. I'm you're just not being courageous. honest. I was. I didn't quit. I did it. But I was. <laughs> I was so nervous. And then I remember you were being so nice to me afterwards that it seemed you like a amazing. dream to this me. Is, by the way, I was performing in San Diego. I don't even know how it came up. You but... just asked me out of nowhere, like five days before. Want to do stand up with me? And I was like, uh, yeah. And I'd just done one show with. I don't know if I knew that. <laughs> I did. I was. I don't think I yeah. Knew okay. That. Listen to this then. I did the dime bar and I figured out ten minutes. And okay. then when I figured out ten minutes, freaking uh, Sickler hit me up and said, "Hey man, have you got ten minutes?" And I was like, "Yeah, I just got it." So then he's like, "Cool, come to the Brea with me." So I do a show the Brea. in front of six hundred people and I shit myself and was like, "This is crazy." Yeah. And then he posted it and then you DM me and said, "Do you want to do a show?" And I'm like. I was in the dime bar with seven people and they were all comics and nobody laughed ever. And now I'm in front of 1,300 people with Whitney Cummings. And then after it, you were trying to talk to me and I was just like, I don't know what I did. I don't know what just happened. Did Tony Hawk, was he here? <laughs> and you're like, hey, you're doing really good. And I'm like, I don't know. Please, lady, stop talking to me. The I funny thing is go. though, it wasn't, like, it wasn't like that was the trajectory and then suddenly you were... On to superstardom, then you started to pay your dues after that. Yeah. Right? But I think that for me, I don't know if it's the same in, in sports, specifically skateboarding. I feel like all I needed in the beginning was like a little jolt of hope. And a little jolt, jolt of yeah, like knowing agreed. my people were out there. And for me, now when I'm doing shows, when I go to each city, I spent, I don't know, 15 years going from city to city, just, you know, bringing an opener or someone that I knew needs, needed stage time or someone that I thought complimented me or someone that was like so good that I knew I would get better if I had to follow them kind of thing or trying to curate like, okay, I do this thing. So let me, you know, if I went to Cincinnati, I'd be like, let me bring someone that's from that area. You know, you're, I'm always trying to find out a way to make the audience experiences great and make me better as a comic. And for me, San Diego I it was kind of kismet because I was like such a big skateboarding town what you're doing stand-up now like what a treat for them for mm. me I wasn't thinking about helping you sorry I was like how do I make this a great show for the audience I go to I go to San Diego all the time I do the La Jolla comedy store that's kind of one of my main places I go to work out new stuff and I was like this would be such a treat for them I didn't had I known you'd only done stand-up once I don't think I would have done anything different, you know, but to me, I was like, if he's just in front of people that where he's going to have such a warm welcome, that's going to make you feel so much safer. Cause I think that c comedy like tends to be so, um, what's the word? Like, like, uh, uh, clicky or so like yeah. you haven't done it this amount of time. I don't believe in that. I love that you think that, that as skateboarders we're so well revered though, like <laughs> oh, yeah, in right. town. I like San Diego embraces yeah. me whenever like, I'm hey, there. Is that Oh, it's Jason. Yeah, of course. San Diego doesn't know me. Maybe I should. I don't know enough about the. No, it's the perfect. Ecosystem. It was. It was good. when he came out on stage and jumped on me. Oh, that's right. Then I was. Then they were like, "Oh, he Tony Hawk knows him. Let's all embrace this guy." Yeah. But it was like it couldn't have gone better. No, it did really well. It went, but yeah. Element is a tasty electrolyte drink mix with everything you need and nothing you don't. That means lots of salt with no sugar. It contains a science-backed electrolyte ratio. 1,000 milligrams sodium, 200 milligrams potassium, 60 milligrams magnesium with none of the junk, no sugar, no coloring, no artificial ingredients, no gluten, no fillers, no BS, and it's got electrolytes. Element is formulated to help anyone with their electrolyte needs, and it's perfectly suited for anybody following a keto, low-carb, or paleo diet. Electrolytes facilitate hundreds of functions in the body, including the conduction of nerve impulses, hormonal regulation, nutrient absorption, and fluid balance. Yes. Ah. Oh, we're gonna get there, Jason. I need more electrolytes. Element can help prevent and eliminate headaches, muscle cramps, fatigue, sleeplessness, and other common symptoms of electrolyte deficiency. When you sweat, the primary electrolyte lost is sodium. Athletes can lose up to seven grams per day. When sodium is not replaced, it's common to experience muscle cramps and 
Fatigue. Fatigue, yeah, yeah. Since you've been using it, do you feel better? I don't not use it because I know that I can't drink enough water in the day. I don't have enough time to stop using my mouth to pour that much water in it. <laughs> I put these in my water and it helps. Right now, Element is offering our listeners a free sample pack with any purchase. That's eight single serving packets free with any Element order. This is a great way to try all eight flavors or share Element with a salty friend. That's me. You're, you're my salty I'm friend. pissed and dehydrated all the time. Get yours at drinkelement.com slash hawkwolf. This deal is only available through our link. Again, that's D-R-I-N-K-L-M-N-T dot com slash hawkwolf. They offer no questions asked refunds. You got nothing to lose. And I think for me, like when I was starting, like what, what what's demoralizing is when you're doing two, three people and you're bombing for other comics. In the beginning, when you're doing stand-up, you're doing it for other comics. They don't want you to win. They're looking at their set. Yeah. They're like, I'm doing something like that. And you can't get an honest read. And Which for me, also helped a little bit, though. To, oh, to, oh, no. But the darkness of it, helps. just no reaction. And like, that helps, too. When you got a reaction, you were like, wait a minute. Because then you find out yeah. you got to love bombing. you got to yeah. love those nights where you just like eat shit in front of four comics you respect. And you're like, I kind of want to die, but I can't yeah. wait to do that again. <laughs> that was that's, the, that's when yeah. I realized that I loved it. Because it, it killed me when I, it happened to me once. And it was like late at night on a Sunday. And I just bombed in front of like 15 people at Ha Ha's. <laughs> and I got in my car and I drove. There was no way there was 15 people at Ha Ha's. <laughs> That's the first lie in this story. <laughs> including the sweet staff. And stuff. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I remember driving home really upset. And I couldn't go to sleep that night. And I woke up in the morning like, oh, you're such a piece of shit. Yeah. And I was like, I'm, I'm like, wait, you're doing what you do when you can't make a skateboard trick. Like you're freaking out. And I'm like, I got to get back. Because it also the yeah. thing that burned is someone Does else it, was... Because it eats you yeah. if you didn't nail it. Yeah. And, you, and you can't get right until you I got to get again. it back. And then That's I was a like, comic mentality. Yeah. And to me, when I see someone like, I don't know, I think in, in comedy, there's a little bit of a snobbery of like, if you haven't been doing it for 30 years, like where I love people that come from different fields that that are similar in a lot of ways like skateboarding seems in a lot of ways similar mentally you have to be such a perfectionist you have to be so tenacious you have to like get along with other people that your only common denominator is you both love this thing and might tear your achilles at any moment but yeah. when people come from different backgrounds they definitely have a different style yeah um and a lot of times it many times it's unique where you you're like oh that. that's Never saw that, so that's what probably I, I get the parallel for comedy. Yeah, and it's like you're. It's a. It's it requires a tremendous amount of work and a tremendous amount of focus. It's very high risk. You know, you're. Let's kind of, talk about tremendous amounts of work. Whitney but oh, can Cummings. I say one more thing? Like, I just. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm not going to get a question in, am I? People that's... get annoyed at me, but like Michael Rappaport was like, I kind of want to do stand up. I was like, come on the road with me. Like, do it. Like, I just think that comedy needs to be infused with like sort of mm -hmm. different points of view. It's kind of the same people leaning against a brick wall talking about their depression, <laughs> and it's like if someone like you. Want to do stand up, I'm like, what do we do to roll out the red carpet so you have those opportunities? It's better for us and for the audience. I don't know. Okay, so now can I ask it? <laughs> good, good, I, go, but good luck. Do you trying to ask me a question? Do you stop? Do I stop? Yeah, like working the hustle. Like when you go on vacation, do you like organize a bunch of stuff mm -hmm. and don't you seem you scared me? You know, oh, here's where you scared me. Mm -hmm. I went to the roast, right? Your one, yeah, 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 and watched you. Organize you were everybody. You're the showrunner. Oh, that's right. I, I, on your own roast, where it was like, no, hey, you are not leaving. Do not leave. Get back in there. I was like, go now, do the joke. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wait, <laughs> what are you doing? Turn the light on. Yeah. You don't you dare. I think the quote of the hey, night you're was. you're famous. Get the, on the red carpet. The quote of the I'm night like, was, if anyone gets up to go to the bathroom, you are not coming back. Yeah. <laughs> she made people go back to her seat and then back into it, running everything, and I was so impressed. And I think that I have a... You have a, a dominatrix. I don't have an don't education, you? so I get intimidated by somebody like that. So all the... all the, And you were shredded. And I was like, this bitch just got... <laughs> she's got a TV show. She knows she's going to be on camera. And Because I'm a fighter. When you shred and you have abs, it's pain. It's real pain. You don't have no fun. You eat no fun. Everyone's like, mmm, cheese. And you're like, nah, I'm going to be shredded. Because uh, he, always, he always judges the fire. So that guy, that guy got bulked up for this. Or that guy, and then he's, he's because I know you. what it's like. You go insane to get to, it depends on who you are. Some people have abs. I don't. If I have abs, I have gone insane. <laughs> for like months, I've gone insane. The things I'm thinking are not good. <laughs> You're projecting a little. Yeah. I, but I anyway. Think, but but I, I think that people keep saying I have these crazy abs. I think it's from doing stand-up. 
two shows a night. Like it's the way that you're. I perform. I'm like holding. You know. I think it's actually from stand up because I don't. You're saying do you that always much. have abs. I used to work out really hardcore. I broke my shoulder snowboarding Sweet. in uh, Montana, and Man, then shit. it was fucking. It was it on a rail it was or? So, no, it was. It, <laughs> She's going down the park. Why not? So hey, Lizzie, sit down. <laughs> okay, I have a wild story. Um, but uh, but so then I went into physical therapy, and then I started like doing hardcore like training, and yeah. I think I kept it. But I think a lot of it is from like holding my breath on stage doing stand up. Are you a good athlete? Um, I used to be. Yes, I, I am. Yeah, I'm not okay. gonna. I hate. You know what? That's I'm what it is. You have the natural thing. I turned forty, and I don't need to do the like. No, I suck at everything. I'm kind of like, yeah, I'm great at that. I know what I'm good at, and I don't know. I yeah. know what I'm not good at. But um, I'm. Uh, uh, but okay. So it's unusual I, for a comedian to have athletic ability. Interesting. Because I guess for me, I think it's. I think a lot of people that say they have a well, that, one of my good friends ability. is Rogan, so I only think of comedians as like human weapons now. <laughs> but that's see. one guy. Yeah, I know, I know. All these friends are fat and like high all the time. Nobody's. Burt Kreischer is weirdly. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Burt athletic. He's he is weirdly athletic. Yeah, for a really big. A he's big gonna guy. die in twenty minutes, but he's he was a swimmer. He, I think he's surprisingly good at stuff. He challenged me to a wakeboard contest, <laughs> and I know that he, he lives in a false reality. He told and so me, do I. He told me he wants to become a legitimate skimboarder. Yeah, no. no. It, oh, that's like when you're at the. But you gotta you gotta be running down the sand, drop the board. Like it's <laughs> yeah, but it's very <laughs> high say. energy, and it's. You can eat shit. Like, I feel like no the doubt. only thing required <sighs> for that, like the first entry point, is you need a flat stomach. <laughs> It does help, but if you want to be a legitimate skimboarder, you should shut up. Because that is stupid. That is a stupid thing to want. I like skimboarding. I'm down. Yeah, great. I From skim. time to time, I've done it too, but that's not your quest in life. You're better than that. Everybody is. No offense to skimboarders. Hater. Okay, so people so that people don't think I'm just like a complete psycho with a personality. Yeah, disorder. I can't wait. I it... was we were doing the roasts for first of all, did you enjoy the tape the taping was a little chaotic. The both I thought tapings. It was a great show. Okay. It was oh, yeah, an amazing it was show. Yeah. So we did so basically what happened was a couple years ago, remember when um Comedy's gotten a little tricky because remember when um, you guys uh, out there became a bunch of snitches and dorks and <laughs> did, don't want comedians to do comedy anymore? Remember? Remember that? I, remember, that. Remember, I love this. Remember yeah. when you were like, white guys should never speak? Remember? Um, uh, and then all of a sudden comedy started imploding. Everyone's like, we hate white men. I'm like, okay, cool. Good luck with never. Fine. You're, what are you going to do? How are you going to get anywhere? Who's going to fly the planes, you fucking idiot? Wow. So, sorry. I just, this whole overcorrection of like all all white Thanks for that, Kelly Osborne. Well, I know. I love that 2023, <laughs> I'm like defending white men, you know, because I've got so many people in my life and I guess like, you know, like white men are trash. You're like, okay, cool. So the antibiotics that saved your father's life, whoever invented <laughs> that was trash. I guess antibiotics are mold. Everybody's that trash was a... and everybody's beautiful. Sure. But so then um, uh, comedy started taking a pretty big hit, you know, <laughs> sorry for the pun. Literally Chris Rock got punched in the face uh, at the Oscars. No one stood up. Yeah. No one stood up. But that room makes sense to me that they wouldn't stand up. Because they're all on... Their poses. Fentanyl? Uh, you love that one. <laughs> I, <laughs> just, I just think that it's a world of blowing smoke up people's asses. And when you blow smoke up people's asses to stand up for somebody and be physical or so get aggressive... So the best actors in the world couldn't act like they had empathy? No, no one think, even. No one I don't can, think they are you can get up and l to leave or get up to, to help stop it. to do yeah. anything. Yeah. You know, so it's like so it's like yes, Hollywood is a bunch of I think like uh, you know traumatized. You know, like, well, what about getting up and giving a standing ovation we, to the guy left. that just cracked it? We he left. left. G good. If everybody was Tony it's Hawk disgusting. that night, it would be but, a I mean, it's was it was like you know? Yeah, it was like <sighs> yeah. If I had like seen you, if I had seen you get up, I'd be like I didn't know you were there. I didn't know you were there. Well, we weren't like in the in the. You know, visible seats necessarily. And what was the vibe? What, what happened? Because we you... we um, did I I presented uh, an award with Sean White and with Kelly Slater. <laughs> right, right. Um, and then we were there, and then it, then it happened. We we're like, what? What was the, your first the... reaction? Did you think it, it was can't fake? be real? It can't be real. And then at some point you hear the voices, and you're like, oh, that is real. Oh, this sucks. <laughs> like, and, and did we... you just feel it in your gut? Like, just yeah. This... And everyone was just kind of like, everyone's just. It, it was just everyone's just blown away. So we're just like. And then he w wins whatever. I just felt I felt bad for Questlove because it was like that was his moment. It was just phew, overshadowed completely. 
And to me, it was kind of just like the apotheosis of like comedians, like, you know, you know, we were living online during the pandemic. And then we were, you know, comedians, I think that like, I'm the first person to say like, you know, when comedians are complaining, like you can't, you know, you get in trouble for writing jokes on Twitter and stuff. Comedy's not supposed to be consumed that way. That's not how it's designed, right? Mm. Like, you know, comedy is half the, half the writing, then half the delivery. And we're now writing out our jokes on Twitter and then we're leaving the delivery up to the audience member who's reading. That's <laughs> yeah. not how it's supposed to go, Especially right? on social media, it's almost a guarantee they're gonna get it wrong. They're it's like, get... as someone said, we need a font called Sarcastica. <laughs> <laughs> but it's also like that's also not how comedy is supposed to be consumed. It's supposed to be consumed at night in a grimy place after a couple of drinks, like shoulder to shoulder in the dark. Like there's supposed to be a sense of danger. People have have suck it out right now. There's a little bit of like we're pushing comedy on people while they're at work at two in the afternoon with your super clever abortion joke. I bet it's great, but it, you don't know where that joke's going to come between on their Twitter feed, right? Like you can't control that, right? <laughs> comedy, you're supposed to be able to control all the circumstances. So I write a great abortion joke, whatever it is, hilarious. Everyone's going to love it. It's so clever. It's so smart. I tweet it out. It might come between five toddlers shot in the face at a elementary school and Trump's running again. Between those two, it might not be as funny as what I imagined it was going to be, right? Yeah. Or, you know, someone retweets it and someone that doesn't follow me that didn't sign up for comedy during yeah. the day at work is going to see it and go, ugh, I hate this. But you think that hurts real comedy? I think that it really more means like comedians are so desperate to be able to get out their sort of like unsafe comedy or their, you know, that there's no place to go and we're resorting to, the, you know, like Netflix, like employees are doing walkouts, like, you know, which was, by the way, how dumb are you? <laughs> how dumb are you as an employee that you see a Dave Chappelle, you stage a walkout when you're working from home? Yeah. This was during the pit. Like, what did you oh. like leave your apartment on Gardner? Like, what, how did that... It, they were working from home and they're like, we're walking You out. walked away from your computer. Yeah, <laughs> you close your laptop. Yeah. Like, how did that look? I'm leaving that there. So then there was like that. And then even on YouTube now, like you get demonetized if you say certain curse words, if you say- Oh you know, yeah, we you know, know that. Yeah, you're okay because we're always, you're here and we don't, <laughs> but, but my show, people, they, YouTube hates me. But it, and does it get out of that? You get demonetized? I have a, I have a new show now that is sim similar to if I was, on terrestrial uh -huh. so that I can survive. And so what happened when you curse on YouTube, does it t get taken out of the algorithm yeah. and you get demonetized? Yeah. That's, that's wild. Yeah. Because and my show used to be only that. Like I'm, I'm a sailor. I'm from Australia. It's like, if you're not <clears throat> F bombing, you're not talking. See? So, so then, now I, now I have a don't say F bomb on the wall for everybody in there. <laughs> Which is by and the we, way, it's we like- We try to survive. But he has great abortion jokes. Uh, but, <laughs> I don't tweet And, them. and uh, invoices, I'm sure. <laughs> Um, <laughs> that was a great abortion joke. Thank you. Um, and so I, I kind of just like found, like I used to do the roast. I, I, I started writing on the roast and then I like performed on the roast. And to me, like the roast is like such a solution to all this like shame. It's a shame release. It's kind of this, like you go up, you own your mistakes. People make fun of you. And we're at a time where no one can say, yeah, I'm not proud of that Halloween costume I wore 20 years ago. That wasn't great. You know, like it's now just turning into this like shame festival where we're all like, you know, um, uh, even if you've done your time with your comeuppance of making a public mistake or tweeting the wrong thing, everyone is just like, you're canceled, you're in or you're out. And the roasts were always about going, here's this flawed person, and yeah. we're going to sort of like, you know, uh, uh, what it, cleanse them of their sins by making fun of them, and then we can move on. And we show like, you can be self-aware, you can have made mistakes and like joke about it, and like, we're all adults here. But I think what started happening is on uh, Comedy Central, it started getting like, they were so ratings hungry that they started mixing really great great comedians with celebrities. And that to me is like MMA, putting a heavyweight with a featherweight. It's not fun. It feels mean. Someone's gonna get hurt. The whole point of like the roast is that nobody- And a lot of times celebrity is like, wait, what? Yeah. This, Do I don't you, Oh, want, Pam Anderson this. cried. I mean, it was awful. <laughs> like it was just did like- you, uh, it was, This is so random, but somewhere in the mid 2000s, they did a Travis Pastrana roast. And okay. Like there was the sort of- um, kind of pissed that I didn't It was adjacent to, to X Games. Yeah. And I got invited and they kept saying, are you going to come? I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll come, sure. And then I didn't realize that when you're a yeah. guest, then you're a fair game. Yep. Oh, wow. And they had us seated, like me and Ugh. Ryan Sheckler and a few others seated like right on near the stage. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I see. <laughs> they a needed a punching bag. Us. I understand. Okay. But who was roasting? Uh, 
Jeff Ross. Oh, oh wow. nice. A real yeah. roast, though. Okay. Did, and and did, we knew did, that he was already had a reputation, so everyone's just like, oh, man, when you start looking at us. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it is also tricky, though, because I feel like athletes, you guys bust each other's balls. Like, you're not too sensitive. Or... Yeah, it wasn't. It, they, they had some of the skaters come up and talk. It wasn't great. But they're like, that's what reminded me. You said like an MMA fighter in different divisions is like, no, this isn't working. Even if you're trying to give the skaters jokes. To I'm not going to pop into the X anyway. Games yeah. for a day. <laughs> yes, exactly. Like I'm not like, I just think yeah. that like there's, there's, I think everyone now <clears throat> thinks they can do everything, which, and maybe they can Godspeed if you can, you know, but to me, it's like, this is a, a um, I don't want to say art or craft, whatever. It's it's kind of more, I sort of see it more as a mental sport. You know, it's like verbal MMA. We're like sparring with each other, yeah. you know? And it always needs to and feel... And requires experience. Totally. It's a very difficult skill because you have to be as clever as you are mean. You have to know how to edit yourself. You have to know how to deliver it, you know? And so, like, for example, there was this joke that, that if you had just tweeted it, it would have been totally killed us that Tony Hinchcliffe said to uh, uh, Jim Norton to incredibly experienced roasters that take it very seriously these yeah. are people that like it's 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 serious as a heart attack to us like which is you know when I was watching the the um, Chris Rocks call you know because now there's all these jokes that are off limits we're not allowed to say things we can't say tranny we can't make fun of Jada Pickett Smith's gay Scientology bald head we have to stay away from that now Wait, she's gay <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I just don't think straight people act like that. Um, I remember thinking to wait. What? I just remember thinking about Will Smith. I'm like, there's other ways to touch a man. You don't have she's to go riffing. through this whole. Right. I'm just. I'm confused. I'm trying to figure it you out. You never thought they were gay? That couple, the the Will and Jada. I mean, I'm I'm gay, and I got a pretty good gay da. <laughs> I think I, I'm a trans man, by the way. It. That's my What's new. That? That's my new. As I think, I must be a trans man. That, that has might be because I'm really into that. So maybe that's what's really, going a on trans, here. But a trans man that hasn't you know done all this stuff yeah yeah i don't know what you would do no it's the soul you have the soul of a man like how does a trans man start they do they do testosterone and then they get top surgery uh-huh oh no i got top surgery the other way i've like i've you know, got so it all that, backwards yeah. um no Each but their own no but it's just the idea of like like i even just said that and you guys got uncomfortable it's like i didn't get i just don't think anything should be <laughs> off limits to joke about and if you physically harm someone because you can't take a joke when you were sitting in a seat that historically is the seat you sit in and you're gonna get joked about that's just kind of the deal so to me i'm kind of like wait a second comedy is about like taking tension out of the room it's about like like naming naming things that everyone's like walking on eggshells around and just saying it so everyone mm. can kind of just i don't know if anyone grew up in alcoholic mm. home but a lot of comics did and when you grow up in that kind of home it's a lot of like things you're not allowed to acknowledge it's a lot of tension it's a lot of like oh, wow. passive aggressive stuff and comedians are just like does anyone else think it's weird that yeah you know what i mean not that we're right we're idiots that the same you know company that makes the you know this pill is also making this thing like we're just the idiots that put shit together Backed by a leading clinical trial where nine out of 10 men experience healthier and visibly improved skin, Caldera Lab has the tools to keep your skin fresh and confident as the weather heats up this summer. Ow! Ow! Use the code WOLF at calderalab.com for 20% off their best products. Caldera Lab creates high-performance men's skincare products by combining pharmaceutical-grade science along with nature's purest and most potent ingredients. The regimen and bundle is twice a day routine to transform your skin. Inside the bundle, you'll find the clean slate. I use that in the shower. The base layer and the good. The clean slate is where you start your day. It's a balancing cleanser that uses gentle plant-based cleansing, leaving all skin types refreshed. The base layer is a nutrient-dense, fortifying moisturizer that hydrates your skin and absorbs fast, leaving you with a matte finish so you can start your day confidently. The good is before bed, clinically proven, multifunctional serum that helps your skin look tighter and smoother. It also helps reduce visibility of wrinkles and fine lines. In every drop of the serum, 3.4 million antioxidant units protecting your skin. The Icon is a rejuvenating eye serum to address the three most common skin concerns around the eye. Fine lines, Yep, dark circles, yep, and puffiness. Committed to transparency, sustainability, and excellence, Caldera Lab is on a mission to better men's skincare around the world. Priding itself on clean ingredients and doing right by their customers and the planet we live in, Caldera Lab is a certified B Corporation as well as member of the 1% for the planet. Through uncompromising craftsmanship, exceptional ingredients, and rigorous transparency, Caldera Lab is here to upgrade your skin and confidence. Yeah, confidence. So everybody finds you hot, and then you just float through life 
getting free hugs and stuff. Get 20% off with our code WOLF at calderalab.com. That's 20% off at calderalab.com by using code WOLF. Oh! Woo. Take your skincare to the next level this summer with Caldera Lab. Breaking news, Jason. Yes, Tony. <laughs> Manscaped now <laughs> sells beard products with the new Beard Hedger Pro Kit. Now your drapes can match your carpet by going to manscaped.com and using code HAWKWOLF for 20% off and free shipping. My hair is all different colors, Tony. It's confusing. And now that not, I'm getting older, I've added too. gray to the mix. Because I'm like yeah, a redhead, just... blonde-headed guy with like some black hair. I, I don't know. I'm a beast, man. Let's talk about Manscaped Pro Beard Kit. First things first, the Beard Hedger, this cordless trimmer gives you 20 hair cutting links all with one guard. So no more messy drawers full of extra add-ons. Plus, it's waterproof so you can shave in the shower to avoid all that hair in the sink. The titanium coated T-blade is tough on hair but smooth on your face, leading to single stroke efficiency that brings satisfaction one stroke at a time. Yeah. The Pro Kit also has four dermatologist tested formulations for your post trim care. All your hair is different and needs different care. Apparently all your hair is different colors too. Yeah, and some spots I don't even have any anymore. <laughs> Some spots I got spots, I don't even know why I have hair there. Next, the kit has Manscaped beard oil to relieve dryness both on the beard and the skin beneath while adding a little shimmer and shine, making you look extra fine. Last but not least, the beard balm to shape, style, tame, and moisturize. If that wasn't enough, the Pro Beard Kit also comes with three free gifts, a beard brush, comb, and scissors to ensure your beard is ready to impress. So get 20% off and free shipping with the code HAWKWOLF at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use the code HAWKWOLF. And then OnlyFans came to me, OnlyFans TV. They're doing like a TV arm. And I thought it was interesting that they came to me. And of course I had the same reaction as everyone. It's like, oh, this is like a porn site. And this is like, you know, we're such dorks. Like, I'm on there. I'm not telling one joke dude, at all. It, it, <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, it's, cause to me, I've been in this business so long and I'm kind of like, like Saudi money, Saudi put money into Disney, Amazon, people are like, you know, I just started a pilot at Amazon and they, you know, we didn't make it for a couple reasons, but I'm like, why are we banging down doors to do comedy at, a, I mean, Amazon's a grocery store. Like, why yeah. do they get to to do TV and say no to some of the best creators and not make special? Were you saying that, that you you were hesitant because of OnlyFans? Just the, the reputation is that it's because it has a reputation. Like, like yeah. it's porn, it's sex workers. And then I kind of was like, wait a second. As soon as I went, ugh, I I went, what is that? Like, because whenever we judge something or look down on it, it probably means something else is going on. Yeah, what's so bad about that job? What's so what exactly? So I was like, what's that prejudice? Because also, comedy started in strip clubs. We're the same. Yeah. I go to strip clubs, I go to Crazy Girls on La Brea, and they're like, how you doing? I'm, like, I'm they a, look down on us. I do both. <laughs> okay. I, I do are you both. steady work? <laughs> yeah, totally. They're like, how are you? Like, they're like, they exploit their bodies. We exploit, like, our childhoods. I do both, <laughs> and I don't feel any different about either one of them. <laughs> Got to create some content, and sometimes it's good, and sometimes it's... It, You're it's, on OnlyFans? You have your, a profile? Yeah. What's going on? Everything. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody's in it too. It's probably yeah, not what's the show not for going it. on. What's wh I don't know about this, and I can't yeah, tell. If I don't joking. really try to blast it on here or like to the to like mainstream. People. What are you doing on there? Everything. That's fake. With everybody, all the kind, all the people in the all the kinds. What are you? Are is it sexual? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's fake. Are you kidding? Yeah, how much? You more? think he's fake? I don't know. I don't know how much I more. You're. A, I do. You're, can I tell you something, Jason? You're yeah. an oddball. Yeah, I know. You're a person. I, it's hard to read you. I just want to be you. me. I'm just trying to figure out who I am, and I like that. Are, so are you making money doing. on there? Yes. More than I do from comedy. That's incredible. <laughs> so what's wrong with that, by the way? Nothing. I think that's fantastic. So I went on there, and I was like, okay, what's all this judgment about? Blah, blah, blah. And I had just been so... Um, uh, disgusted by yeah. the way that TV networks were working, the way that, I mean, you see it, the writers are on strike you right now. You said at the at the roast that you thanked the OnlyFans person and said, they let me do my material. And I remember when you said that, I was like, wait, you're saying that Netflix, like all the bigger, the way, where you work your whole life to be a comedian mm -hmm. for 10, 20, 30 years, yep. and then you get a special on a Netflix, yep. and you're telling me that they will tell you no, 
all the things that got you there, you're not allowed to say those. Or That's, they won't promote, they won't put it in the algorithm if you paid for it yourself. So that, you know, so it's like they kind of spent all their money on a lot of, not that Netflix isn't a great place to do comedy, but it's kind of feeling like it's falling through the cracks a little bit. But they'll stop you from some of your jokes. Like, don't that, say that. That didn't happen for me oh, okay. necessarily, but I see a lot of comedians who are going through that. It does happen. Mm -hmm. okay. It does happen. And then even if you're trying to put something on Instagram, it might be bumped out of the algorithm because you say Jesus Christ or you, you know, say a curse word Man, or whatever. What? Comedy Central's just gone at this point i mean that was like our main yeah. way to reach the masses yeah and having now, a special on there you were kicking ass have you been at comedy central look at look I know. it's it's like a it's it, it there's a adobe plugin oh, like you can't even find point. specials I on know. there anymore <laughs> you're just like is this is this a geo city right. like it's just gone that was the place too it the was. place yeah you know, it was still sort of had a lot of, um, uh, uh, it was still prohibitively like the exact, it was up to the executives, yeah. but I was like, what would happen? Like, cause what happened with YouTube with, you know, Rogan and Schultz and, and Bert and, you know, Sam Morell and all these like new comics, like, you know, YouTube is not totally like female comic special friendly yet. I don't think it's like, I always say like, come for the joke, stay for the misspelled comments about my face and how I'm an unfuckable cunt. Like you do kind of have to go through all the, Whoa. you know, <laughs> what she just said? Oh, is, yeah. she's, is, no, she's not reading comments. That yeah. Hulk versus Wolf. That is staying in for sure. No beeps <laughs> at all. I'm now, I see I'm even trepidation. That makes about me feel so cunts. much better to know that someone says that about you mm -hmm. because you're so fucking hot. It's creepy. Oh, no, I shouldn't have. Sorry, Tony. You're so Why are you hot. apologizing? I'm so dead. Because I feel, I, I feel it's awkward. I'm, I'm making it. But you, that that makes, because when people say, you're the worst fucking blah, 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 homo. And I'm like, man, I'm really, am I that bad for being a homo? No, it's just people are, they're people joking. Say, you're half an idiot. The time. So that's, okay, okay, cool. Oh, yeah. I got all, I, I got all kinds of stuff. You know, but it's more, I can handle it. Like, I agree with most of the negative comments. Let's be honest. I'm like, good point. But, <laughs> yeah, sick burn. I'm like, say, hey, dude, I'm going to use. <laughs> and so um like good observation like so i think that's the other thing when comedians so are, intuitive yeah when comedians are like all oh, the negative comments i'm like you don't agree with the if you don't agree with your negative comments you don't deserve to be a comedian your self-esteem wow. is too high but i think half the people that leave negative comments they're probably just trying to be funny they're just like i don't know i don't i don't take that shit seriously like um and to me people are engaging they care in some capacity yeah, well you know what i mean yep. like anyone that leaves a comment is a little like when someone's like i love you you're the best i'm like that's also crazy <laughs> you know what i mean it's like no what you're the reason the i didn't kill myself yeah yeah no i'm not like yeah. now you're just a liar whatever <laughs> so it's like if you believe the good you have to believe the bad and i kind of just like you know yeah. like we didn't sign up to be universally beloved that's never been a thing no yeah no you know? i'm, I'm and inspiration. That's a problem that that's what's if happening. that's what you want yeah. like you're not you're not being i think interesting enough as a comedian we're supposed to be polarizing i'm that's inspirational yes. and i'm like also <laughs> in my cold plunge crying like a baby trying to survive the day and I'm like, I'm inspirational. Yeah. Maybe I'll send you this video <laughs> to inspire your ass. Because, yeah, indestructible Jace never quits, never gets down. Yeah. Always goes for it. Always believes he's number one. Like, I always think it's, no. when people tell me I'm inspiring, that is the most insulting thing you can say. It's like, you've man, you, I mean, you did it. <laughs> so you're like, I'm a make-a-wish kid. I just saw how you took that. Like, yeah, you, so you're, you're, I'm inspiring. You think someone, well, yes, you are yeah, inspiring, yeah. but not because you had a terrible childhood uh -huh. and everybody treated you like shit yeah. and somehow how you figured out to accomplish stuff and now look at everyone knows who you are and you've got money no it's it's your work ethic and what you've you're a genius oh you, you write and you've done all these things more than i'll ever understand i touched the, i dabbled a little bit and was like you've written for a really long time for everybody and done all these other shows you've not you, like doing stand-up is hard doing right. a podcast and stand-up is really hard you do way more than that. What, I still like, don't know how to do a podcast. I don't understand. <clears throat> what? I, have oh, no, yeah, okay. about, I listen to Dude, it. <laughs> I have no idea how to do a podcast. Like, what is a podcast? If you don't is know how this? to do a podcast, I don't know what we're doing here. <laughs> don't, every, hey, don't collapse this shit. <laughs> we're fine. I know how to do a podcast. But I think... I Fuck think... these guys. Just listen to me. <laughs> You'll be fine. Stay just, with me. I just like... I'm like, is that... I just... I think for me, I, I like to be very... I'm not trying to be self-deprecating, but in general, I'm always like, uh, since when is a woman talking for two hours that you have no chance of sleeping with a business? <laughs> like, who is See, it? That's like, why I like it, because I think I still got a chance. <laughs> 
<laughs> You're an edger? It's like hour 45. I'm like, nah, she's going to get me. Recently separated. Are you an edger? <laughs> oh, I. Sand. By the way, oh look, my Jason, God. stop pretending. Oh my God. What? Okay. Are well, you thanking me? Or are you. Are you... <laughs> but no, no, how about this? <laughs> I'm dying. Now. Too soon? No, we now were. Now listen to them. We were texting yesterday. <laughs> And I don't oh, know what scary. happened. Oh, yeah, I'm doing another screening of when my, because my roast is coming out. Oh, yeah, I almost came to your house with my uh, Speedo on on, on Tuesday. T- on I'm Monday, I almost, if I had to text her, I was going to her house with my Speedo on. Oh, for on. the screening? Yeah. No, I thought it was a pool party. I didn't, no, 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 I hold on, no. It screening. said RSVP by May 1st. The event is on April oh. 16th, <laughs> May 16th. <laughs> I've been going through a lot, Tony, you know that. <laughs> yeah, on. Come hey, on, that's, man. That's on brand anyway. That's <laughs> not like that. Hey, fuck, <laughs> come on, what do you mean it's on brand? <laughs> I, I show up to your shit all the time. Uh, early. What are you talking about? You show up because <laughs> there's someone else on those texts now. I may have been 10 Shut minutes up, late. <laughs> I may have been 10 minutes late today, but at least I wasn't two weeks early in a bathing suit. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. I'm so pissed I texted. It like, would have been so much cooler. So he texted me like, on you, Monday. No? By the way, on Monday. You should have yeah. known there's the fact that you even thought there'd be a pool party on a Monday is already weird. I don't know. You guys live it up, you know? <laughs> so he's like, hey, I might not be able to make it to the party tonight. And I just wrote, what party? <laughs> he wrote, don't you have a pool party today? And I just resent the invite. And he's like, sorry, I'm in the middle of a divorce. My bad. <laughs> That's but you lift the so, other bit out, thank you. I did. The I'm coming off about- Kratom, I don't care. Don't do it. <laughs> How? It's terrible. I've been sh- I was shaking for two days. At one point, I started like crying and howling like a baby. How and I couldn't different? stop shaking. I no and idea. I headbutted the concrete to stop myself from shaking. People love Kratom now. Yeah, what, well, do you- I, don't th- I don't recommend it to anybody. I did not know I was doing it. So I got sponsored. I was like, here, have a shot. And I was like, yeah, I have a shot after I skate or before I get in jacuzzi, relaxes you at the end of the day. And I was like, I'm relax myself before I do stand up because I don't drink and everybody else drinks. Next thing you know, I'm doing four of them a day. And then I was like, man, I don't feel that good. I'll try to, do, I'll do less tomorrow. And I'm like, I feel worse. That's not good. How's that work? And then I talked about it to Dr. Drew on my show. And then that aired and Andrew Huberman saw it and called me immediately and said, that's bad shit. You need to get off it right now. That was so nice of him. He's so good like that. He will. And then he called me every day when I was going through it. Ooh. Yeah. It's been a lot. He comes from skate background. He yeah. comes he's from Northern proper, California. Yeah. He's yeah one like, of us. He's he like slept a... in Tony Hawk's bed. Where... He, he, that's right. No, he <laughs> didn't. <you're... laughs> In your bedroom, yeah. Your yeah growing bedroom. up, didn't he was Sorry. like in, he was like taken in by you? <laughs> <laughs> I, something... I shouldn't even clarify. I just want to okay. yeah. see yes. how that. Yes. Yeah, and just like the game was, of telephone that, that goes on. He was like Elian Gonzalez in your. He was house. at an Andrew event. Andrew Huberman is Tony Hawk's he brother. Was at, and he was at an together. amateur skate mm-hmm. event in San Diego that my dad was helping to run, and at some point the contest was over and everyone was dispersing, and he. He had taken the bus from Northern California down to that event, and the person he was with bailed on him, and so he was like fourteen or fifteen. Wow! And my dad recognized like that. I think that kid is feral, and uh, said, "Hey, do you have any place to go?" And he's like, "No." Oh. And so they brought him to their house, and I had moved out by then, so he he stayed in my old room. It's so crazy. Where it was still like had pictures and trophies and stuff in it. And then the next day, my dad uh, brought him to my house where my ramp was, and then he got to skate my ramp. And I don't—I mean, all this was news so to me. So crazy. He's the cool. best. Like he's yeah. like he's like just such a, you know. It's like I don't think more men need podcasts, but he's the part. Like I th- he's like making a pod. I, I just love him so much. He's, he's like thank God people. he exists. Yeah. He can't take it all because what he does is really disciplined the average bear can't handle that yeah but if you take little bits and pieces of, the, of that and put it in your life yeah. you're better off for it yeah he's, he's speaking facts yeah it's also nice to be getting like information from a scientist and not a comedian but, it's all, but also you 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 want to i mean i think that the, the the idea is that he's so relatable too that he yeah. went through this this yeah childhood. i can understand yeah. him and so that tells you yeah. something he's not like and a trust fund kid who was funded by epstein stuff. and like right. science is such a creepy place sometimes right he's just here to help he's not a part of that yeah he's the real deal that's why i did it that's because on day four i was like i maybe i need to go to hospital or maybe i need to get like i'll just do one more shot to help me and i'm like i know that because i'm a junkie i'm like nope that's not the answer but are you sober off other stuff yeah it's what it is kratom it's It's a a plant (laughs) and if it's a plant that acts as a as a like a heroin painkiller oh wow 
and the and the and the detox because now I did it. My friends have been googling it for me and been like, some people like it's like six months of hell wow. to get off it. And I I went through like a really hard couple of days. Transplanting. There you go. Yeah, it was that. It was that. In, I'm, it was so, trans spotting. No, is that the way what, you explain it? It was, it was that's what it's called Whitney. when trans. I was embarrassed. Men have their periods by myself on the concrete, going, "You got here again, but this is worse." Because I've recovered from alcohol, and I never, when I recovered from alcohol, I went to rehab. And they gave me like some pills and stuff. I didn't shake one time. Mm. I just remember thinking, "I don't want to live without drinking." And then I got past it, and then I did this one with the attitude of, "I don't need." Uh, to run anymore I go to mm. therapy I know I'm like accepting myself these days and then I realized I was like you you're on it you're on the on a worse one it, so I just white knuckled it that's what he said he said white knuckle it and yep. then the whole time when that was happening I was like white knuckle it he said white knuckle it I'm like Fuck it. I'm white knuckle it but holy crap man and how long had you been on it before you three years kratom yep it I've... escalated three years where I do one a day like a pill and, for no nah, right. it's a shot <gasps> right because i it's it's available like i was in new york gas stations recently. everywhere yeah and they're like let's go get some kratom tea like over the counter at a like cafe i don't want to ruin it for people that do it like if you want to do it that's cool i'm just telling you that you're not as clear i know that people like get off heroin and they do it and that's it's better than heroin for sure really yeah because it's it's you can't die from it Ah, you can't I didn't realize it was such a high. Like, but it like, does, if you do enough, it makes oh. you like in co. It makes you out of it. Yeah, you're like, oh man, I'm relaxed, I'm comfortable. You're high. I feel like this is the new thing. I feel, I feel like a lot of people are like in LA. <laughs> everyone is on drugs, which it's is because so funny. of the weed stores. They now sell <laughs> like <laughs> they got the mushroom. Everyone Dude, does mushrooms all drugs. the time. No, I know, but her her thing is like uh, driving. Everyone's on fentanyl. <laughs> Everyone's on, no, 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 no. Everyone is on drugs in the city. And it's funny because people accuse me of being on drugs because I talk so fast. But I'm like, no, no, yeah. you're just on edibles. This, I'm not talking that fast. Like, this is like... Oh, a, no, no. You're talking no. pretty fast. Yeah, thank you. Thank yeah. you. Because I'm, I'm high, high, but he's nothing. not. I'm the you're, only you're person that is not on Adderall. And, and oh, and this is the new thing. Everyone's microdosing mushrooms. And I'm like, how often a day are you microdosing? They're like four times a day. Like, Four microdoses is a dose. So you're, you're on <laughs> yeah, drugs. at what point? Yeah. No, that's, what does it add this up? This is not micro anymore. And also, people yeah. are not, And also, it's bad for comedy because it's like comedy. You're supposed to perform for people that have had a. They're a little couple tequilas, alcohol, something. To, you don't want to be performing for people that are like, like forgiving their ancestors and like are in. <laughs> Interesting. You that's, want that's too much. You have to conjure a little bit of anger, a little bit of right. to make some tension, and everyone is just so cozy. I would. I think we have to at least outlaw like indica in the comedy clubs right because people are just napping during shows i'm like i work so I, I, am i bombing why are, are you... they coming if, if they're so relaxed and bored because just everyone's everyone's on i don't i don't know the answer i mean it's like comedy was like you want a little alcohol you want a little vodka beer but now everyone's on um you know weed tinctures does that, does that make for less hecklers the heckles are just different they're like you know they're the like, passive. forgive yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one hurts. That they're is not, worse. They're not like dumb cunt. They're like, oh, no. And I've noticed that. Like, you know when you like self-deprecate on stage and I'm like, yeah, because, you know, and then this, whatever, guy cheated on me. And I was like, oh. You're like, no, I'm a self-made millionaire. I'm yeah. fine. Don't worry about me. Yeah. You know, but uh, but yeah, so I think there's a little too much empathy in the I comedy on my audience. Feet. What's that? I landed on my feet. Yeah, I'm fine. Like, don't do that. Don't feel <laughs> yeah. pity. What is this drug you guys are on that you pity comics now? <laughs> and can someone give it to Will Smith? Yeah. You know? So I just, I think that that low key, at least in LA, everyone's on fucking something. Like yeah. when we did the writer's room for the roast, you know? It was like, you know, you use your writer rooms, you know, they're competitive and you're going, and everyone was just like kind of chill and sort of like, we're writing roast jokes, you know, and they're yeah. like, they're like, Jim Norton, he's just such a good guy. I'm like, guys, we got to get back to the, yeah. the angle. Like, what, what, what's the angle on being a good guy? <laughs> yeah, I know. He's How just like, is that funny? He is so supportive to other comics. I'm like, guys, he dates trans women. Let's go. <laughs> like, yeah. We got to get into the, you know, so it's, it's, I think it's probably a good, uh, everyone's on ayahuasca. There's microdosing cool, ayahuasca though. now, though. I ayahuasca is well, that you can't do that regularly. I thought you do that, that was that. like a just one hit like mm. thing. It's not one hit. They, it's, everyone, it's not one hit, but like, like it's big. Like the hack now is microdosing it so that. Wait, what? That doesn't. That's not how that works. You gotta go. You gotta go in. You don't 
What? The, that's but like a little. She's in the trenches. A little she's every day is everyone's artists. new thing. <laughs> she's hanging out with bullshit artists. <laughs> no, I just I feel like a lot of comics are microdosing ayahuasca, mushrooms, and then just on. It means edibles. you're taking the edge off. That's all you're doing. You're taking the edge off. Yeah. The medicine. The doctor does not say shit until you take the whole pill. I just don't think a bunch of like white 22 year olds need to heal. Like what? Well, nothing's yeah, happening so to you yet. To what them? are you healing? Yeah, what what is your trauma? Oh, your parents are all forgiving and understanding and they pick you up from school. <laughs> no plan like, medicine shut up. until you're 40 yeah. and on your second divorce. Yeah, you gotta be a kid. Try being a kid all alone. You the gotta whole do, time. you know what? This is what I, I wanna When you ever with... ask for somebody's help, they're like, shut up. Do you guys, do you guys ever play videos on the show? Yeah, sure. yeah. There's a Boozy, the rapper Boozy, does a, a video about why he thinks we should go back to crack. This is going to be a tough argument for me. No, I think it's pretty... It makes it, sense. Am I allowed to play it? No, probably not. He I, also says crackheads are funny. I thought you were saying everybody should just start doing crack. But no, if you're doing fentanyl, I, I definitely... Huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just like this fentanyl shit is just like killing everybody. Right. You know, at least you didn't do that. No, I, my error, like good my error of doing that, there was no fentanyl. So I got lucky. You could probably relate, right? What? To Was what? Your, did you ever do drugs back in the old school days? I am so embarrassed because like it's with this, with my personality, everyone assumes I'm on so many drugs all the time. I've never done cocaine. Same. Meth. I'm surprised. Never done Not heroin. You, you, I am. Never done heroin. Never done meth. Like I took Adderall once or like, a couple times when I wrote my book, but it kind of made me like um, buzzy or Terrifying. something. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I actually... <laughs> Sorry, but I just got anxiety. Just Whitney Cummings and Adderall, please. I don't know if you love me or hate me. I, um, it's, shut up. It's a uh, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> so I was prescribed. What is it when it uh, uh, tapers? Uh, uh, when a, a pill time lives. release. Time release. Thank yeah. you. Time release Adderall to sleep. Yeah. Uh, because if you truly have ADD, it calms you down. Oh. So I it, it didn't. didn't make me manic or anything, but when I took it to write my book, I was just a little bit like like I felt like my brain was dry. It's the only way I know how to explain yeah. it. You know, and I just felt like I was like more tired, like it just didn't like serve me. Yeah. Like but maybe in another iteration it would. And um What made you not, not do the target them? demographic then? Yeah, I don't think so. I'm already a little like I feel like if I I don't I like I feel like if I take these drugs I'll like start another business or make too many friends that I don't you know what I mean? I, I'm like, a, I, like You don't worry about that in general. I just don't want like people <laughs> I know they do cocaine. They're like, yeah, I like made a new friend last night. I'm like, I don't want any new friends. I don't want any new business ventures. Like, I just, I, I need to chill out. You was know? it somebody that showed you that? Like, did somebody do it and you were like, wow? I, note to self, I'm not doing it because it's weird that you never did it and you're in comedy and everybody. Uh, I, I, I'm not, maybe I'm wrong. I wasn't there. Uh, it just seemed like all those people did it or all the people around them did it. And now they're no? dead. I think right. I kind of watched and I was like, Jim Belushi, Chris, all the people I, I looked like up to. Because he learned that way by his peers. I uh, need... Yeah, I mean, some died and, and a lot of, most of them just lost their, their skill set and their motivation. And that, and that uh, showed that, you not that to do it. That was definitely a, a huge warning sign. Yeah. My main drug was stand-up and anything that I felt like was going to get in the way of that. You guys are the same. My was skateboarding. See, and I saw so many people that were like should have been further along that weren't because they were like dicking around or Me. they were like on drugs or and then I, I didn't need to see that many of my heroes die until I was yeah. like, I got it. Like I get it. And I also grew up, you know, around addicts and alcohol. So I already was like, why do you want you look dumb like my biggest fear I realize is embarrassment. They say comedians become comedians to control how we're embarrassed. And growing up in an alcoholic home and seeing, you know, when you see drunk people and you're like, you guys think you look you think you're cool like you're it's they're embarrassing themselves, but they don't realize that was always my biggest fear. They think they're jovial and entertaining and engaging. You're falling around. You look yeah. like an idiot. You don't come off smart. And like, to me, I just was like, why would you want to come off stupider? Because I was always so insecure that I wasn't smart. So to me, I just looked at that and I was like, I never want to embarrass myself like that. Man. So I associated drugs maybe with embarrassing myself. And I thought it looked badass. I think that that's the thing is that when I have done like like when I've like drank before and stuff, I, my brain is like you're killing it, and then I'm like, wait, you're probably not. Like you're yeah, probably yeah. really not. 
Like you'll look at yourself in pictures and you're like, oh, I thought I was like nailing. That's my biggest fear is to think you're cooler than you are and everybody knows something that you don't. Yeah. It's like if you look at it, like one time I saw a photo, a, a, a demo, a tour that I was on and I had a FUBU jersey on and I was like, <laughs> I totally Boo. remember that. And I was like, I remember like getting a lot of girls on that tour and I was like, man, you, you got it. Dude. And then I saw a photo and I was like, <clears throat> whoever slept with you is a moron. Like, it wasn't just the normal, it was the baby blue one. Like, it was, it was the worst jersey a man can wear. And I was like, in the demo, like, right about to shred. I'm going to shred with this jersey. What's up, chicks? Yeah, you like my jersey? For us, different buy us, you know what I mean? Everybody's welcome. Foo boo, baby. Yeah. But also, like, every time I, like, drink and I'm in a photo, I'm always like, ah, and my tongue's out. I'm like, what? I'm like, like, I'm like, what are you, yeah, doing? Are you doing? You're 40 years old. Yeah. Like, it just is like, I'm like, have my arm around. All, all of a sudden, girls start, like, ah, putting tongues in each other's face. I just, I'm like, what are you flipping off the camera? Like, what are you doing? Like, who's that? I don't know. I don't like that person. Like, I, I I already have delusional confidence like yeah. as a performer. I don't need any in my private life. So delusional confidence, but also delusional uh, like hatred for yourself. Do you have that as well? Like I'm the worst comic ever or only I'm the best comic that ever was? I think that when it comes to comedy, you can never be too hard on yourself. I might say the same for certain sports because you're in physical danger. Like you can't be, you know, when people are like, you're can't such doubt a yourself. You're such a perfectionist. It's like, why wouldn't you be? People are paying money to see you do this. I don't think that you can be too hard on yourself when it comes to your performance, but I think that the the key uh, to staying sane is to be able to be incredibly hard on yourself about your performance and then to be able to turn it off in life and not be like that just all the time. And so you can do that. I, th I can now. It took a long time. I've been in um, uh, ACA uh, uh, Al-Anon 12-step uh, program for about 10 years, which has really helped me with it to be able to go like, okay, I can be hard on myself about my what I do for a living because, again, I'm charging people money and I'm taking up stage time that other people deserve. What and group is that? Al-Anon, so it's, it's um, there's AA, which is if, if you're addicted to you know alcohol, yeah. NA, addicted to narcotics, Al-Anon, an adult child, is usually when you um, grow up around or raised by alcoholics. And yeah, you develop I these, that. And you develop these adult child traits where it's like, you know, you ended up being like a parentified child. You had to parent your parents. So you ended up being addicted to perfectionism, control, the three M's, mothering, micromartaging, uh, uh, mothering, micromanaging, and martyring. You uh -huh. sort of define yourself through your productivity, your achievements. You like had to be perfect all the time, you know, because you grew up in a home where there was very little emotional space or you had to be, uh, uh, no one could really caretake you. So you ended up having, you know, learning to deprive yourself. And, you know, it's kind of like, but it's para-alcoholism. A lot of times we end up being addicted to adrenaline, you know, because there's so much chaos going on in the home. So it's like I would find myself subconsciously being in, you know, very dramatic, stressful situations, you know, rescuing people, dating addicts, trying to save them, fix them, stuff like that. I was going to say, do you find addicts tolerable, be, more tolerable because of the... We're addicted to addicts usually. Because we, we, we were raised by them and or we're learned to caretake them. So we Is would, the other one addicted to addicts too? Al and not ACA? No, if you're an addict, you're addicted to other addicts. I mean, that might be the case because the other addicts probably have drugs. It's probably more about the drugs they have oh, okay. than the actual <laughs> addict itself. But we <clears throat> tend to, uh, you know, and I'll speak for myself, is that I found myself in my 20s gravitating towards people with, you know, addictions and such because it recreated my childhood circumstances of, you know, chasing for their approval, competing with, you know, a substance that I could never possibly live up to or they would never possibly choose me. It kind of justified a fear of intimacy because when you're with someone who's an active addiction, you're not really they're not really present with you so it's a way to be with someone without having to take the risk of being rejected and then you get to define yourself through like rescuing them saving them that's how you get your self-esteem you know but like if an addict needs you an addict and addiction needs you like it's how big of a win is that you know Do you get tired <laughs> what what is what? How much slower do do all you people need me Wait, to talk? It's not because of that. I'm just saying. Do, do I get? I get well, I get tired. He's thinking about all these like all these things. I want to do a lot of things too. To, sometimes yeah, it's more. It's more. It wasn't. It I wasn't. It wasn't your fucking question. It wasn't your cadence I was gonna, of speech. God. I'm just trying to breeze through yeah, it. Thank you. I'm trying no. to tell her. I'm, thanks. Sorry. I thought you were I'm on me as well. Here. Thank you. Because I was gonna. Maybe Say we if you go do back shoot on the, the messenger, kratom. I disagree with you, Superman. <laughs> that <laughs> fucking that's too soon. All right, that shit hurt because I'm thinking the same thing right now. Okay, so yes. But where do you where do you get the energy? Like, do you ever? I wanted to ask, do you ever get tired? Because if you do, yeah. how do you 
make yourself energized again because I want to learn whatever it is you're doing because I want to do it. <laughs> That's what the question was. I wasn't trying to be insulting. No, I joking. fucking like you. I'm sure. Maybe too much. I... Fuck off. <laughs> no, I think I I think I'm a little bit insecure because uh, you know, it's and I'm not trying to go like being a woman in comedy, like but it's more I think for me, there's a little bit less of a patience for a woman talking, so I try to really blow through it very quickly. <laughs> you oh know, I, so I, I who's, it's an, who's it, the asshole that made you do that? Every like, oh yeah, man, I've society, ever met. yeah, society <laughs> I mean, through the like, years, yeah, I, yeah, I get that. Yeah, like no, this, man. and I'm on a, you know, I try to be very aware when I go on someone's podcast, like, like they're here for you guys, you know, and I think that for the most part, people tune into a podcast for the hosts, and then maybe whatever happens between the guests or what the guests can bring to the out in the host. So I find myself coming in being like, just blow through this really fast, but I don't want to not answer your question. But the answer's so long winded, I'm trying to just speed through it. Keep going. Do you, I haven't got the is answer your yet. kink women talking? Like I, I've never met a man who's super who's into interested that. in what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, <yet>, prob- no. <laughs> you might have hit is, your head more than me. That's this is yeah. a ridiculous. first. What are you talking about? Well, no, I think that it's just like you know, it's it's unless I'm saying something funny, I find I try to go through it really fast. Why? But if it's interesting, like, can you not tell yeah, that I'm intrigued the- to know? Where the energy comes from? No, Give I can't the, tell. I'm answer. so distracted by the shark tooth that's banging against your neck. Oh, I do yeah. like it, though. It's, it's my hair. Yeah. <laughs> it feels like when it hits me, I'm like, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for me to leave. Soon to drive home that. in my convertible, <laughs> feeling the wind yeah. through my that's hair. It, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I think I just find myself, when it comes to that, I think I'm also like, uh, maybe I'm projecting because I'm a little bit of capacity with with comedians just talking about therapy and how depressed they are on podcasts. It's like Jesus fucking Christ. Like it's I like pride myself on going like anytime I'm gonna be on cam, I'm gonna try to be funny or entertaining and not like try to get people to pity me. So I think I also blow through it a little bit because I don't ever want anyone to feel sorry for me. So you're telling me sometimes you just feel tired and you go anyway. I think the times you see me I'm always at maybe my I'm all, we're always on camera or performing yeah or yeah. you're about to perform yeah yep. yeah yeah you mean when she is running her own roast yeah yeah she's... <laughs> how do you get all this energy I'm like well I had to... she's probably firing on all pistons then, yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. that was well Good also point. you saw it again like the roast we shot it I really wanted it to be comedians in the audience friends they had a bunch of only fans talent come and I was like okay great like which I've learned so long ago to never do a show that doesn't charge in some way because people, if something's free, just psychologically, mm-hmm. it's like free, you know? They're so it's privileged. And there's a little bit of I'm at this thing that's free, yeah. which is I started doing at colleges when they go, oh, it's a free show. I'd be like, can we just charge them five bucks and give it back to them at the end? So you give five dollars <laughs> cash, and then when they leave, you that's give it back. Sick. Because if people good. think something's free, they'll be 20 minutes late, oh, they'll wow. fucking talk, they'll like, it's free. This doesn't have any value, yeah, so why would yeah. I value it? Yeah. You know? So like a psychological thing. So I was like, ah, it'll be fine, it's the roast, people will be respectful, like, you know, whatever. And it was a lot of OnlyFans talent, and um, it's a lot of like models you saw, a lot of beautiful women that in their lives, the rules don't apply to them, people. Mm-hmm. It was all the people that are like, I don't wait in lines. Like, man, man, It's man, about them being seen, too. I don't pay for drinks. Yeah, and then everyone's in these, like, because we did, like, a hoedown, like, Western themes. So there's all these cowboy yeah. hats. I have 12 cameras, and these people are getting up to go do blow on the... Do your blow before the taping. It's a yeah. taping. You know how this goes. Okay, I want to switch gears just for one second because this came up recently, and I realized that you wrote for punk I was on punk as on a punk. yeah as a uh, field agent. See? Yeah. That oh, was okay. But were you helping write the skits? It, I really wasn't. This was like my first job when I got here. I had uh, when I first got out of college. Because knew you had to, you'd be able to do improv in that. It was way. so weird the way that that happened because this was at the time that punk was like. Um, remember, there were two seasons of it, and then he can't. Yeah. Ashton Kutcher canceled it. It was this like prank show. Right. It was like so popular, and then Ashton Kutcher went on like CNN or something. It was like we're canceling the show. And so at the time you could do that. Like the CNN would get the message out and everyone believed it. Uh, (laughs) There used to be news networks that people trusted. And, uh, and then I come to LA and I was going through a lot of auditions to be a VJ. This is very embarrassing. (laughs) Very (laughs) embarrassing. But that was, that was, and I was up for like G4, uh, attack of the show. Like I was doing like hosting kind of stuff. Like I was running around because when I was in school in Philadelphia, I worked for this company that, um, 
Uh, I worked at like, like QVC and like a lot of random stuff. So I had like a modeling agent got me these hosting auditions. Do you remember that show Trading Spaces? Yeah. It was like, it was like all those home renovation shows. Oh yeah. So they would hire me to come and it was actually the production company was based in Philadelphia and I would play different parts during the audition. So when they would audition like a contractor, I would play the homeowner or if they were auditioning a, <laughs> I would like, and then I, I got up to whatever the final test of hosting trading spaces, like, which was just happened. They were like, what about her? You know? And so I got like this other agent. I went into MTV, uh, uh, ho ho I mean, I kind of was my dream. I mean, I grew up on MTV and yeah. like, you know, it's so funny because it's like, it's why it's, it, it must be weird. Like, I mean, you've been famous for so long, like you've been around celebrities for so long, but like, girl, I remember watching Polly Shore on the beach house, like sitting in front of the TV, staring at the beach house, which the fact that that was a show, it was just like <laughs> yeah. people in Florida dancing yeah. <laughs> for no reason. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like real world, I definitely made a real world audition tape. Like it is somewhere. <laughs> And if oh, anyone man, finds so it, great. I will give Let's you that, every dollar in my bank. I literally but we'll play that at the stop so before I, she what, gets here. The reason this came up is because when you were doing it, did you ever see someone start to realize what was happening? Interesting. So I have this like sociopathic ability to lie. And it's, it's, I grew up around pathological liars. I grew up around, you know, a parent who would cheat and go, this is what you're going to say when you go in. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I was taught to lie. I, you know, parents were never home. I had to go to neighbor's houses to get food. Like I had to really lie my way through sur to survive. And to me, it also wasn't, I because I used checking out into fantasy as a kid as a way to survive. I was alone a lot. Like there was a lot of abuse, yeah, but there was a lot of neglect. And neglect is like kind of something, I think people don't talk about a lot because I would check out into like these fantasy mm -hmm. worlds. And I would like, pretend to be different people, like dorky, like, you know, it's, it's it's not like acting. I'm not trying to pull some like calm, like Daniel Day Lewis call me Lincoln during the whole production, but I would like go out in the world as like, with as different people and be like, that works. You say that you pretend to be dorky? Well, no, I was dorky. Like it's, it sounds like a dorky acting exercise, <laughs> yes. but I would sort of be like, I don't like my circumstances. What if I go to, you know, the of friend's house and talk to a parent and I'm introduce myself as someone else and I'm from here and I'm from San Diego, like just kind of to see what you get away with, see what other, you know, cause I always want to be someone else. And I would like write in diaries as other people. Like it sounds it's really dark thinking back, but it was something that was just very second nature, you know? And I grew up around pathological liars who, would be like, yeah, and then we're gonna, we have, cause there's a boat in Greece we're gonna stay on. We didn't have money, but there was a lot of like fake, yeah. you know, shit, and you would have to go along with it. That's how I would show love to my, you know, family member that, or uh, uh, dad who was, would do that. It's you have to enter into their reality. So I was like, I'm really good at just entering into a reality. And um, uh, kind of was raised more by animals than people. And you kind of just have to new truth it. Like you just have to be in whatever their reality is. And it's all energetic. So whenever I would kind of feel like there was one with, I think Julia Stiles, where she kind of, something didn't add up. And you just go to the thing that doesn't add up. Like, like I, I realized very early on, if they start figuring- no, you had to turn it. As soon as they start figuring it out, the best thing to do is curse. Because they know, like, you can't curse on TV. So as soon as they start being like, is this a TV show? You have to go, oh, fuck. God fucking damn it. And then they're kind of like, well, you can't curse on TV. Like, there's, a, like, there's just right. a little things you do, because at the time, um, you know, or you just acknowledge it. Like, if there's a camera showing, you just so feel do like... do you feel like you, you saved it a couple times? I think that I was yeah. able to weirdly be just like in the reality for a very long time with them without, I don't get spooked. Like I don't get like, Oh God, they noticed something. Like right. if they're, if a camera showed and I saw them see it, I'd be like, what is that? Is that a camera? Like you just have to go with, and then they're like, you know, so it's kind of just like, you, you pull them out of that. Yeah. Down. Like you just have to stay as grounded as I, possible. I asked it just because we, <clears throat> we just watched that jury duty. Did you see that? Oh, I haven't seen it yet. It's, 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 it's great. Oh, it's really so great. Funny. But, um, it reminded me of punk and I was on punk and I did figure it out. And and at some point I was like, do I, do I do the thing? Shit. Like I don't know what to do. You know what I mean? And and I think they saw me turn that way, and that's when they revealed it. Whoa! I think that did happen on mine, my season, and maybe it was because we had the benefit of everyone thinking it was canceled. You know what I mean? Like people would say, like this feels like punk, and I'd be like, yeah, but that show got canceled. We couldn't be on punk. Like you would just right. sort of like. Read right. into it, you know? I think you, what it was for me is that I recognized one of the guys. Oh, shit. And I was like, that guy, 
Like, that guy's an actor. And then I thought, okay, okay, let's just play devil's advocate. That guy's an actor. He happens to be here in San Diego at the beach, and something weird happened. Like, Can I ask you know what, what I mean? the scenario was? I'm the sure scenario I saw it. was that um, supposedly my son was hanging out at the beach. That's beach he never goes to, and he dropped. So your son was in on it. Yeah. Yeah, he... but but they kind of they kind of surprised him with it. He was not stoked in the originally. Oh yeah. wow. It was weird, um, but his mom went along with it, and it was fun. So it was my son Riley, but he was young. And then they said like he put an M80 in the toilet, in the public toilet, and someone went in there, and then it exploded. It blew up a lady, and the lady's my friend. You probably know it too. Who? Uh, uh, oh you my. said that with such disdain. No, because we. I just went on her show. She and, was the one that. that she was, was like, I'm. I was the one that got blown up. Right. <laughs> But but her but, <laughs> but her like, boyfriend oh, wow, her boyfriend world. was Hollywood a, baby her boyfriend was kind of Sarah, a character actor Sarah, so Sarah, I, Sarah Highland him. oh I love Sarah Highland yeah me too love her oh yeah Sarah Highland. so he was kind of a character actor and I was like and so I said to him I, they didn't air but I was like so what are you guys doing here from L A because I just knew he was and he's like didn't wouldn't respond and I could tell that uh, in that moment I was like oh there's something weird going something on. awkward yeah. Yeah, um, it's on mine. Like, and there was also just this, this van with very dark windows right here. <laughs> yep. Uh, you know what I mean? Yep, 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 like, yep. Okay, so, I get it. There was a couple, like, by the time... Go. No, I just... It's skateboarding. Like, Rob Dyrdek caught it, too. Like, there's yeah. too many things that you're connected to that they don't think you're connected to. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, but I mean, like, from the top down. Like, black my window son vans, being there... We've, we've hung out with people that would do that. Not even <laughs> for a TV show. Like some exact, something's weird's happening and there's a van and I'm like, right. okay, who's jumping out? Like, this, yeah, yeah. because everyone's an asshole. Yeah, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> That's very interesting. Yeah, it was, it, it's, it's, I mean, by the time I did, I don't know if, if this is what they were always doing, but it's like, you know, the same with stand up, something that Chris Rock said sometimes that, that really helped me. And maybe this is similar in skateboarding. I don't know. Um, but if things are going poorly, slow down. Never speed up. Never go faster. Yeah. And it was the same when when if someone started to feel suspicious, you just slow down. And by the time I did it, the the skits, the sketches, the p pranks would go like three hours. I and they'd be like, "Wait, you got to move." I'm like, "I'm telling you, like we gotta slow down." Yeah. And I think it also comes from yeah. like coming from animals, putting horses on trailers. Like you can never force some. If someone's got fear, you can never convince someone's gut that they're not feeling what they're feeling. Because humans yeah. are. It, it was also like an amazing lesson, and like humans like. They know, you know something, even if you can't articulate it, you feel a weird feeling yeah. and you can't just force someone to do, and then if you force them, they feel even weird. They dig their heels in even more. Yeah. So it was like you had to do something. My, he definitely, when I, I think when he yeah. saw me doing it, he, he took it slow. He wasn't yeah. like, no, no, what, what you, you know, what, it wasn't like some immediate excuse. Yeah, yeah. So that kept me in it. Yeah, right. Just like, cause you <clears> wouldn't, it. yeah, cause TV moves fast. But you gotta, you gotta watch Jury Duty because there's a couple of times where it, it is just so, there's just no way. And then they somehow bring him back to, re, to, to believing the whole thing. Did you ever see Windy City Heat? No. Oh, I'm going to change your life. Okay, Windy City Heat is this movie, truly probably my, the funniest movie, I think. It's a, it's like a prank movie that Jimmy Kimmel, Adam Carolla, and Bobcat Goldthwait made where they what? took this porn, oh, this guy awesome. who's a porn star who's like just a little like an odd dude and they make him think he's starring in a movie and they film the whole thing and it is <laughs> no dude no dude it is it is the because they basically treated him like a movie set all the cameras are rolling yeah. so he thinks he's starring in a movie and his ego gets so out of control and it's just this amazing um sort of how does he sign off on that you gotta watch it dude Perry, dude, it's it's epic. I have a bunch of the DVDs. And how I'm is sure that guy not famous? He in comedy, like it was pretty big for a while. Like he okay. even went on Kimmel. Like they had him go on as the star of the movie, and he still thought he was a star in the movie. I mean, it's got when you look. <laughs> Man, that when, oh, wow. that seems look, a little mean. When you honestly. look back <laughs> at it, it feels a little mean. Yeah, but, they were committed. Like, is he alive today? Yes, he's okay. he's a th alive he's and kicking on Twitter. Yeah. Okay, good. And he. It's. I think he has just the perfect level of narcissism and like desperation to where it's kind of works, and yeah. you don't feel too <laughs> bad. It, you know, I did one time show it. I was touring. This was like seven years ago. I was touring, maybe longer than that. Donald Glover, Childish Gambino, uh, Chelsea Peretti, and Nick Kroll, and none of them had seen it. And I was like, oh, let's watch it. And I'm like watching. I'm dying, and they're like, this feels mean. And I was like, what the fuck? Like so. <laughs> every time I show it to you're someone, you're not invited to my roast then. I know. Right? <laughs> 
you know, like <laughs> fucking losers. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. I think for me, it, it's it's so it's so great, and it's so shocking that they pulled it off. Like you know, Bobcat Goldthwait, Don Barris is in it, who you know closes the the main room every night. It's just bonkers. It's yeah. just it's prank at its best, wow. and it feels it doesn't feel super unfair. Weirdly, do you I, think know, I haven't watched that, it in a while. Do you think if they <laughs> did if it came out now that that guy would be famous? I, yeah, I do. Right. I mean, I think that it just, the at that surprise. time, like there's certain things that were made at a time, like even punked where it's like, sure. you could easily Google something. Yeah. Like, you know, it just was a time where you were offline enough to where it, you could convince. Yeah, like if someone, if it was like, well, this movie isn't a real movie, I can't Google the production company. Like, yeah. you could there get away with There were things on more. punk that, I mean, I'm watching them going, there's no, people don't do that, do they? Really? Did you? Where uh, like, I remember they, these, <laughs> there was a, I can't remember who it was, but they were borrowing jewelry for like to, to go to an event. I feel like this was and then Laura and, Flynn Boyle or something. And then the cops stopped them and they're like, what's all this jewelry? Because the cop pulled them over for some traffic violation or yeah. something. And like, what's all this jewelry? And it's like, oh, we're just borrowing that. Oh, borrowing it, huh? And then at some point they're like, we're famous. Uh, we don't have to buy this stuff. We don't have to steal this stuff. Yeah. Like that was the line, but then it's that on was the takeaway. TV that he yeah, that was the takeaway, that. and I remember asking Ashton about that later on when I met him, and I was like, "What about this?" And he goes, "They called me to thank me wow. for putting them on the show," and I was like, "Okay, that's just I don't get." But you, because you have a choice of whether you're going to sign off or not, because like the idea is, I right? That's after. what I mean. I go, "How did they sign off on that?" And he goes, "Are you kidding me? They thanked me for including yeah. them on the show," and I was like, "Well, All the right, idea well, was like yeah. as soon as it's done." kind of an as soon as they're so grateful that the scenario wasn't real that you go sign this and yeah. like oh thank god they're kind of like not thinking I mean, think of, that's what they had to do for jackass like every skit as yeah. soon as it was over like hey sign this release i like the one where they did the poo dollar and some of the people that grabbed the poo dollar didn't wouldn't they were sign blurred. it <laughs> they're like i'm yeah. not fuck you i'm not fucking signing your poo Dude, dollar do you remember i want to say borat i want to say borat remember there were like college kids that were saying racist oh, stuff yeah. and they yeah. didn't sign a release oh, yeah. and they ended up suing them but they were like it's worth you guys suing us and we'll pay you whatever amount yeah. of money and some crazy sexist stuff too yeah it was like wild yeah. but they were sued yeah. for like and they were like yeah we'll pay you each million dollars like still worth it the movie made you know <laughs> billion dollars like sue us please like awesome. we would do that i remember like like when I look at like, you know, I don't know if when you're posting something on Twitter and there's like music, you're like, oh God, this might get taken down. When I worked on one of my, I mean, my first writing job on staff staff was on Last Call with Carson Daly uh, back, back in the day. And I would do sketches. I'm like, this would be great with like Thriller under it. And oh yeah, and we'd be like, let's just use it. Like, what are the, yeah. like, do you know what I mean? What are the chances the Michael oh, Jackson you, estate all the skate videos of the nineties? I, I, I used the Beatles in one of our <laughs> in a birdhouse <laughs> video. <laughs> Pretty sure you didn't get a sign up like, on that. Like, if you guys come and sue me for that, like, yeah. it'll still be worth it. I'll just take it down. <laughs> yeah. But like, what are the chances the Michael Jackson estate is watching Last Call with Carson Daly at three a.m.? Like, it's probably fine. You I know, just realized that was one of the great things about skateboard video parts in the 90s is you could have any song Anything, you wanted yeah. especially if you're the Virgo. Yeah, nobody who, watched who, who it who are you gonna sue yeah. you know, money I'm like Metallica Jay Z yeah. like I don't care like I'll put anything on it nobody said I learned, anything I learned how truly difficult it is when you want to license songs now right, and you legitimate have. that was like that was the, the biggest effort besides the skating of making our last Birdhouse video was chasing the music because uh, is that hot they don't want to or you just can't it's just so many person. people own the rights and the and there's the, like five writer. So yeah. did you come to did you come to the Burt Rose taping? Yep. I feel okay. So remember Kesha comes out at the end. Yep. Okay. So 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 I really wanted the Rose to not. Oh no, I didn't. I watched it. Okay, you watched yeah. it. The, you came to the premiere. I think yep. you ignore me there too. Okay, and so um so I really wanted them to feel like heartwarming and not like gross or nasty and they're gross and they're racist and they're this like I we had all these rules that were like off limits of kind of just like this just like. Not that you couldn't write a good joke about it, but like, let's just stay, let's just be creative and try to stay in the warmth and stay in, you know, uh, uh, roast should kind of feel fair and like the best version of like being tickled or something, you know what yeah. I mean? But when you start bringing in like gross, it's like, you don't want any cringes, you don't want any groans, you know? So, uh, but at the end, Bert is such a great person, you mm. know, that I really wanted to sort of also make it this wish fulfillment, like dream come true. Like, I think if, you know, I'm like at a point where I'm kind of like, okay, I know how to make people laugh. I know how to kind of 
do this. I, I did. I had a robot in my four special that I made to look like me. I, I wanted a different reaction. And I got like a <gasps> like like creeped out, hypnotic, you know, I was like, that's a cool thing. And then I was like, how do I get these like involuntary reactions that kind of make you give you goosebumps and show that comedians were not these monsters that are trying to, you know, again, after Chris Rock made that joke, like that was probably the nicest joke that had been written about yeah. Jada. And they, the reality is that they were probably backstage like, oh, that's too rough. Let's just, let's just do the G.I. Jane one. Let's just do the softball. Yeah. Like, that's probably how it went, ironically. Yeah. So for it to be painted as, like, comedians or these bullies or something, you know, especially at a time where, you know, I have people being like, well, co comedy causes violence. I'm like, what the fuck are you saying? Wait, somebody's... You loser. Like, comedians are being attacked on stage. Chappelle was yeah. attacked on stage. Yeah. And guess what? Most of the people that get attacked on stage as comics, they're not rich and they're not famous and they don't have security, you know? Happened to Kim Kong. Yeah, because that because the stage is right here. Yes, dude's right here. Or guess what? You go yeah. off stage, people know where you are. I mean, Ronnie Dangerfield, like Joan Dangerfield, has become a good friend of mine, and he used to get beat up after shows all the time. You know, like even when he. I was... can't wait to get huge. You can come to my show and you can you can <laughs> meet me in me. any fucking alleyway you yeah. want. <laughs> Have you seen the Jim Jeffries video from when yeah, he got punched in the ago. face? Yeah, that was that's so, so he got punched in the face on stage. Yeah. Um, you know, John Caparulo, there's a video of him at Hermo Hermosa Comedy Magic Club saying something about Trump. It wasn't even that. Whatever, someone threw a glass, hit him right as in the a, chest. Oh, uh, no, no, then I saw a lady say something then similar and they threw a can of beer at her head. That was yeah, and that girl Ariel. Her, still, yeah, she was, ducked. Yeah. Like it was w amazing. Yeah. And then Kim Congdon, who was opening for Joey Diaz after the show they were doing a meet and greet and a guy came up behind her and just stuck his finger up what and it was just like what she happened to be she happens to dress like you know a, a new jersey housewife and was wearing some plastic pants or something whatever you know? but like whatever just, pants you want like crazy and then um yeah so it's it's just sort of like you know and again comedians like you don't have to like us we're not you know we don't always have to be a cup of tea but we don't deserve to be physically assaulted while we're just trying because also here's the other thing when people say like comedy like fuck that joke don't say that you shouldn't say that it's like comedy is made for people that are going through a hard time that have shitty jobs that uh you know that have more problems than you helps so, them get through the day so if you have such a great life that you don't need comedy i think that's awesome yeah. but that doesn't mean <laughs> yeah. take it away from the right. people that do need it or, you know? or go to the places where it's happening yeah yes yes <laughs> it's, so it's like when people are like you should be able to make that joke it's like well that joke's not for you it's for the guy that works at the amazon warehouse who has to shit in a bag who like it might not be the funniest joke in the world but it's yeah. better than his fucking reality you know i can't wait for that somebody thought about it a while ago and i just gave him this he was real close and it was a shitty stage so it wasn't very high and there was two english guys and they were fresh off the plane because they were strong accents and mm. one was completely obliterated and one was like one more beer away from saying good night and the little guy was yap yap yapping and i said you know i talk about gay stuff and he was like oh really and i was like i'm sorry what and he just didn't say anything. And I was mm. like, that's what I thought. And then I looked at his buddy, who's a big guy. And he and I, and I was like, ooh, you look like you want to say something. And he was like, yeah, I'm no fucking fruitcake. And I was like, yeah, you showed me. <laughs> hey, everybody, this guy's no fruitcake. <laughs> <laughs> this cocksucker just got nailed to the wall. And, and then he looked at me like he didn't like it because the whole crowd was laughing at him. And I was like... Go on. <laughs> <laughs> well, most comedians historically then, don't, don't look like you. I mean, it's yeah. very new. But that... I already had my toes stuck in the ground, and I was like, if your head goes up, it goes off. Have you ever seen a, a fight in a comedy club? No. Yeah? It's wild, dude. It, it's on, wild. Yeah, like in the crowd, or you mean to a com comedian? Well, too. I mean, I remember one time, I don't know if you know Brett Ernst and C. Byrne. This was at the comedy store. This must have been like 12 years ago. And like just those late spots. I mean, the comedy store was for a while, like after Rogan left uh, with the whole Carlos Mencia, Mencia debacle, it was like a very odd energy for a while. It was like German tourists and like it was like a hostel. Like it was just like, you know, I don't know how Groupon energy, just sort of like <laughs> weird. Are we allowed to say hooker anymore? I don't know. Like just like cool. one guy, three hooker energy, you know? Yeah. And just non tourists and darkness, homeless people, like whatever, unhoused. I don't know what the fuck. I know a say. place that's doing that right now. I'm not saying it, mm. but anyway. And uh, the comedy store was like that. Yeah. Yes. In, uh, in dark energy. In not so long ago time. Yeah, I mean, this was this was when I was like coming up there, and there would be it was like the lineups were like Dove Davidoff, you know, Steve Byrne. Uh, uh, I mean, Sebastian would come on a little bit later because Sebastian was working at the Four Seasons, and he would come on his break, and he would be wearing his Four Seasons, you know, waiter <laughs> outfit. Go on, Sick. Ahmed, Ahmed. You know, there was a lot of like pugnacious energy, and 
one time, uh, uh, I think it was Brett Ernst said something like that. Like, what the fuck, dude? What, you want to say that again? Because there was a time where people would just feel super comfortable just being like, saying crazy shit to comics, you yeah. know? Like, we're, we're treated worse than strippers. I mean, we're treated so... That's not funny, man. Like, just shit like that where you're like, well, now what? And they're trying to impress their girl and then you people are... It just gets dicey. And so then this guy, like, came at a, with a chair at Bretter and then Steve ran on stage. It was like a... A melee, a brawl. a brawl where it's like it's already you hurt yourself walking through just because it's so dark anyway. Every time I walk on stage in the OR, I fucking hit my knee on a chair. It's already dangerous just when there's no fight, but when that happens, it's just like it's such intense energy because it's like guys in front of their girlfriends, oh, everyone's a little drunk, everyone has something to prove. And it's then, not like that now, right? Well, it's like if you're a dude in the audience, you know where it's the worst is fucking La Jolla Comedy Store because yeah. it's a lot of like Navy SEALs. It's a lot of people that actually can fight. <laughs> it's a lot of military people like and a lot of rich women that are like, fuck that guy. Yeah. And like women are sometimes the worst. <laughs> right, that was a really good impression. Because they know they can't get hit. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? They know you can't yeah. hit them. So yeah. they'll just be like, fuck this, you're not funny. And then the, now it's just like, and the guy's like, can someone put a dick in her mouth? And then now it's like, just, <laughs> you know. It's, <laughs> and it's like, you're going to let him talk to me like that? It's like the look Jada gave Will. That and does, you're like, that, oh, that sounds, fuck. Right? That yeah, sounds I mean, I've seen a lot of crazy shit. And, and you know, like one time Dane Cook was uh, doing his, he did a special at the Laugh Factory, this must have been like 10 years ago, that was all one take. It was like, which, I, Dane works so hard and he has so many big goals, like bless his heart, I don't know why you would want to do that, you know, it's just like, the audience has to be so copacetic mm -hmm. and so, you know, and so he was doing trying to do one take, he had kind of conquered comedy at that point, so I guess he was just trying to do like unnecessarily difficult shit. I'm sure you do that too, and just skate, skating. You're sure. like, now I have to do this impossible thing. And so I was, uh, someone else was opening, and then I was opening. And when I was on stage, you know those like hecklers that like think they're being helpful and supportive. <laughs> yeah, sure. It's these two hot girls in the front, um, I'm doing whatever I'm doing. I'm like, so when a guy does this, and they're like, that is so true. To oh my god, <laughs> totally. <laughs> And you're just like, can you not, this is the, war like, oh my, that's, she's right, oh my god, like that shit, and you're just like, this is a nightmare, and so, I, I they're, but they're not doing anything wrong, they're just like, for a taping, that's one take, Blowing it. couldn't be anything worse, yep. so I go upstairs, and I'm like, there's these girls in the front, like, they mean well, I think they're just like, from Irvine, or something, yeah, and lovely, lovely way place. too pretty, and they're just, they're, uh, I call it like, backup singers it's like when they're just like that's true that's right oh, totally you know and my so ex-wife calls them shit pigs shit pigs yeah <laughs> wait you weren't at the burnt roast i had to kick some people out during my set you missed that oh what yeah wait, what oh. stay on the story okay, okay. okay thank you Last one Tony. um and so uh uh so then at the time jamie masada had this like israeli dude out front who was like in the israel i guess everyone was in the israeli army if you're israeli but he um you know, and these girls got kicked out and they were like pissed and they were like, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm a Virgo. You're going to do this to me. You're turning me on so much right now. <laughs> It's very dark. When I'm at my most annoying, you're at your most turned on. I can't be great. And so, um, and so the girl, one of the girls just went in for like a, just went to, was like, oh, fuck you to yeah. the, the bouncer. They were obviously drunk and he just like react, just went, boom. Oh, like no. there was no Oof. question. It was like, <laughs> she, like that, that and just boom between the eyes, the girl's knees buckled. Remember those, um, oh. remember those toys that you put yeah, your yeah, thumb yeah, in it yeah. and they yeah. collapse. <laughs> like it was like her whole body. <laughs> Never worst. seen anything like it. <laughs> Hit sorry. in a pile in the ground. Knees and head, it same time. Wrong. Hit the ground. And, um, you know, oh. it was just like... I don't think girls even realize that they go, they're like, I can hit you as much as I want and you can't hit me back. So there's this invincibility thing. But that guy yeah. just didn't fucking... He didn't have that rule. It was wild. Wow. So you see a lot of... It's very, like, well, tense energy. We need you to stay safe. Thanks I'll for having me. I'll see you at your pool so, party. I hope this was fun. Yeah, no, no, Yay. Here, I'm going to stop inviting you to shit, too. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. I just want to say real quick before we end, the, when I was at the roast premiere, I, I had got officially separated and i didn't want to let you down so i went anyway and when i got there i was like i shouldn't have come here why because i couldn't talk i was gonna cry oh i'm and sorry and bobby lee pointed he saw me and was like hey what's wrong i'm like nothing i'm good 
I'm like, how, how's oh. your relationship? Because you got divorced and you do a show with her, right? And he's oh, like, yeah. yeah, is that happening? I'm like, yeah, I got to go. And then you went, famous people get in the line. I was like, <laughs> I'm not famous. And you were like, yeah, you are. And I'm like, I. And then you took off and I was like, you didn't hear me, but I was like, I'm fucking not. And then you're like, get in the line. I went in the line. I'm like, I, I decide know anybody. who's famous and who's not. And then I saw Bert. I like that. You, you should, don't. You, you're the Oracle. Yeah. You. Don't, I just, I yeah. mean, it, for this is basically OnlyFans TV. It's like the new, it's the network. There's no, I love there's it. no big publicity behind it. I'm, it's like very yeah. grassroots. So I'm like, if you have a following, like it's just about getting it out to comedy fans, you yeah. know? Cause yeah. it's like, I want it instead of um, OnlyFans. You're fans, famous enough. Thanks for Jesus. always. OnlyFans comedy, comedy fans only. I don't look like I appreciate it, but thank you so much for always counting me in on stuff. I, I, you're I, one I of us. I officially it's, start it's... to get, feel worthy of it and I'll show up like me. But yes. you're one of us. And when we, if that, mm. if we decide that, you don't get to argue it. And the more you argue it, the more we know you're one of us. <laughs> we're like, you belong here. You're That's... like, no, I don't. I'm like, exactly. That's okay. why. If you were like, yeah, I belong here, we'd be like, oh. That was, that was a good Okay, summary. good, because I've never said that. Right. Thank you, Whitney. Thanks for having Thanks, me. Whitney. Sorry I talked Appreciate so fast. It. No, we love it. Or slow. Stop. I don't know. Sorry about everything. That's I agree. good, because then we get, like, we get twice as much content in an hour. I agree. Everyone's going to be like, is there? Uh, people tell me they're like, I watch your podcast and I look and I think I've made it twice as fast. Like people will. Oh, call. they 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 put the yeah, fast. Yeah, yeah. You know, you can do like one point five x. Yeah. So do do point five on our show. Yeah, exactly. You guys can slow it down. Okay. Like Thank you. Oh, you yeah, like, oh, and, like subscribe. and subscribe. Smash the like button.